it's great to be here. Thank you for coming to this session. I'm going to talk about something which affects all of us, which is housing and specifically reframing housing using open data. Now, barely a day goes by in the UK without some discussion in the national media about how to solve the housing crisis. Most people recognize that there is a crisis, but there's less clarity about what to do about it. Before the general election, the National Housing Federation created the Homes for Britain campaign designed to bring awareness to this issue. It championed the idea of ending the housing crisis within a generation by building more homes. So what is actually happening on the ground? Why is this housing crisis even here? We must, I think, ask the question, is our approach to housing fit for purpose in this century and what with digital technology can be done for it? It might be surprising to hear that the data tells us our urban landscapes only account for little more than 10% of the available land mass in England and less than half that in the rest of the UK. So technically, space isn't the issue. Added to the question of space, there is one of affordability. On Friday, what is called affordable housing was relisted as part of the public sector by the Office of National Statistics. It consists of approximately £400 billion worth of assets against £60 billion worth of debt, and that's actually pretty healthy as a debt-to-asset ratio. Most people would be able to get a mortgage against that kind of ratio. Yet, the need for innovative thinking to tackle the housing crisis is apparently strong with headlines calling for radical new ideas cropping up regularly. And it's urgent. The deaths of two recently homeless babies um, show that for vulnerable families, this housing crisis is a matter of life and death. Now, there's no doubt that housing management is complicated. It's so complicated, it's missing as one of the indices in the open data barometer. That's why I think it makes sense to examine the business model behind how housing is managed, to ask if it's a broken model and that data can fix it. If so, what can we do about it? I think we can look particularly at the gains that digital business can create as a way of managing all the variables, bringing together information. At the moment, quite a lot of the available data is housed in closed spaces or across different departments and organisations. It doesn't necessarily join up together to create a better housing system, and an open data infrastructure can change that. But there is confusion. There are a whole range of issues and challenges that housing organisations are grappling with. These are some of them, as expressed by housing organisations that between them represent about 2.4 million homes that comes from our last year's Connected Housing report. Meanwhile, average monthly rents are skyrocketing because of disjointed availability and how we manage stock. For tenants seeking affordable housing, the options are getting narrower, with many being reported as going from exclusion to real poverty. Basically, the lifestyles that many hope for with a safe roof over their head that they can afford is becoming no longer an option. I think open data in housing can do two things. Firstly, it can close the dissonance gap between performance data and real life perceptions. And secondly, it can help improve the bigger picture by lowering costs and improving outcomes. This is a map of the national housing ecosystem that I made. It shows 9,811 different relationships that exist between local authorities and housing associations across the UK. Just one housing association can have more than 159 local authority relationships it manages across its housing stock, as, for example, Riverside Housing does. So how can we manage such complexity? Well. If we look at the examples of some early infrastructure, we can perhaps see other ways that we can do this. This map, which some of you may have seen before, is the organizational structure of the US Railroad when it was first built in the mid 1800s that suggests that we can design a vastly improved national housing infrastructure using data. And the good news today is that land registry data, SRD data, core data, lettings data, and more is becoming open. 
So let's take, for example, Manchester City's catchment as an idea of what could happen. We can see through the data what's going on regarding, for example, stock to population ratios, average house prices, the percentage of homes that are affordable, how much stock on average per housing association is under management in the area, and the rent paid as a percentage of the medium weekly wage in the area. Now that's quite a lot of information with which we can draw on some ideas about how to manage housing for better results and how in detail. Basically, we can reframe housing substantially by joining up and connecting this kind of data and creating a framework for it. National data exists on house prices, jobs, and the amount of money people have, either as income or benefits. Added to that, we can now look at how housing organisations are delivering on their core functions that are essentially building homes, managing homes, collecting rent and providing services. The connected housing study that I do in fact looks at this and how it is being handled digitally and assesses which organisations are best placed in terms of digital performance. Through the studies over the years we know that this kind of information accelerates performance. This chart which showed the breakdown of online functions available in 2012 for the top 100 housing organisations had a marked effect in accelerating how online customer services were handled by organisations. This chart from the 2013 study also highlighted the level to which housing organisations were using digital service management to streamline costs in key areas such as providing information on benefit changes or information about local skills training. We can look at the relationship between overheads, outcomes and online engagement. The Connected Housing Study is doing this too. So, to reframe housing using open data, we want to connect the dots and have a conversation about three things. Firstly, we want to talk about stock. We want to help pull together the open inventory about housing stock, about the volume, cost of stock, land registry, uh, land registry data and more, for example, and this is already happening. Secondly, we want to connect that to needs. We want to link data and understand it better so that we can meet people's needs, including their levels of deprivation and digital inclusion, so that we don't have to be dealing with these threshold challenges all the time. Thirdly, we want to better understand costs and use digital business modelling to develop increasingly effective ways of doing things. We want to harness open data so that we can make processes work more efficiently, both in terms of service delivery and costs. These three things, connected together through data, give us a powerful way to help create much better outcomes in terms of how we manage housing. It can happen in the way in housing organisations use the data they generate, and they can be pivotal in creating it. And through this, we can create a powerful national intelligence about how to solve the housing crisis. We can see interdependencies, for example, between housing stock managed by providers and neighbourhood management and create more viable communities. We can see the interrelationship between management efficiency per unit and how many residents are active online, between the average price per square foot and how many people are locally employed, between priorities in terms of stock management and repairs costs as actually reported, between building costs and affordability. And we can do this area by area. There are already great initiatives happening in housing using open data. This one by the Trafford Innovation and Intelligence Lab is looking at the changing face of deprivation in the local area and helping to move towards more predictive analysis. This one by Sovereign Housing seeks to understand affordability gaps in the local area so housing can indeed help people to feel able either as tenants or owners to afford their own home. This by the Leeds Data Mill is looking at empty home trends in Leeds. And this by Midland Heart provides a great sightline on housing data, looking at stock levels by provider, types of stock and rent levels. Indeed, these data examples are not going away. They're just the start. We're moving towards the age of quantified organisation and quantified infrastructure in which joined up data is our biggest intelligence asset. That's why 
it's important that our national infrastructure owns the data and that housing organisations do not lose their ability to make data an asset by outsourcing digital capabilities in a way that fragments data, that reduces the chance of them either having ownership of their own data or being able to con contribute to a joined up picture using data. With Connected Housing 2015, we're making a call for more open data in housing. This initiative is on between now and the middle of December for organisations in housing to participate in. And I'm pleased to say that several housing organisations are already joining this initiative with more every day so that we can begin to build a dynamic intelligence about how to solve the housing crisis. So to go back to the question, can data logic solve the housing crisis? I would say yes. I would say that reframing housing use, using open data is the best way possible that we can create both social and capital value. I hope that more organisations will join this initiative because if not us, who? And if not now, when? That's what I have on reframing housing. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I'm sure there must be some. We've got a question down here, the front. Hi. Um, you talked about housing associations and social. Sorry. You talked about housing associations, social housing. What about other providers of housing, private sector, and open data? Have you looked into that? And what are your thoughts on on that side of the stuff? I've focused on housing associations for the study for two reasons. One, because they create, um, they've got an aggregate amount of stock that they manage, which is easier to look at than the fragmented private sector. And also because part of their remit in having a social purpose is to join up services. And I think one of the key things um, that's really critical within housing, but is sometimes overlooked, is how the roof over our heads is a junction point for so many services that we can really get an understanding about by having a joined up approach to data. If we're in the business of people owning their own homes, they've got that security. But we have with devolution, which is being talked about now, I think we have a real risk that we lose this opportunity to have a joined up picture about our national intelligence about housing. And given it's the thing that crops up over and over and again, you know, I think that's kind of worth, worth going for. More questions? I think... Um, Oops, there's a question there. Oh, sorry, yeah, a question here, the third row back. Uh, so I work for Shelter, a homeless charity. So, hello, really um, interesting. Working. You've been doing some great work on this subject. If you yeah, could just actually, um, I should have said this before, but if you could say uh, your name as well and, and where yeah. you're working. Um, Paul McMullen, I work for Shelter. Um, so we, we've, we're coming up to our 50th anniversary of trying to alleviate homelessness and housing issues. I just wonder where you think from the work that you'll be doing, what you could do if we, because I'm trying to help us open up our data, and what would your thoughts be on how you could work with kind of the data we have on people's problems and the advice we've given over the years and the intelligence that we have? Well, the one thing, actually, uh, I'm, I'm really glad you're here and I'm really glad you've asked the question because in the study, um, it does include some charities um, which offer uh, units, so Centre Point, for example, St Mungo's and so forth. And time and time again, what we see in the study for the last four years is that the charitable sector has a far, far greater traction with people, you know, on the street or in, her, you know, just general the general public. They are far more connected to the not-for-profit sector than they are to the housing sector. So I think the very nature of the relationship you have with supporters, for example, could teach the housing um, sector a lot. Uh, their engagement rates are less than 5% of the average charitable um, rate. But also in terms of your um, your data, which is, is really at the heart of the question, to be able to connect the needs with the stock, with the costs, is, is I think really at the heart of it. And you've got a really good sight line on needs. It's only now within housing that there is an appetite to even hear what people's real life stories are. You know, you are very good at bringing those to people's minds and, and, and sharing them in a way that people can understand. So I'd love to be able to get the qualitative insights that comes from the kind of work you're doing plus the data to connect with things like stock and efficiency and business management because I just think we get a much, much better system out of it. Thank you. 